Good morning. Happy Sunday. How are y'all doing today? All right, cool. Um, If you want to stand up and join us as we begin our worship service. morning. Welcome to the United Covenant Church. Thanks for tuning in online. Um, Some announcements for you. This Wednesday, May 25th, we're having our crew end of year celebration from 6 to 8 8 p.m. There'll be bonfire, hot dogs, s'mores, activity, and a devotional time and prayer. And this event also serves as a time to prayerfully send off our seniors. And we will be welcoming in the sixth grade class into the crew. So if you're going into sixth grade next year, uh, you are invited Wednesday, uh, this Wednesday. Oh, I'm sorry. Current sixth graders going into seventh grade. Thanks. Uh, On Wednesday, June 1st, uh, we're going to join with multiple area churches to be part of an event called Hope Alive. And it's at Michael Park in Amory from 539. We are looking for more volunteers to help with games and uh, bouncy house. Also, if you're interested in helping with uh, like face painting, balloon animals, uh, make a note on, on the sign-up sheet, uh, sign-up central. Uh, there's lots of ways that you can plug in and help in this community event, and so we're hope, and we're hope you're able to attend. Uh, Saturday, June 11th, there will be a work time at church starting at 8 a.m. 
there is a beginning maintenance list in the foyer today, and many of these tasks could be completed independently either before or after the workday. Uh, so if you're interested in working on a task on the list, please sign up. Uh, you can see Matt or Susie Thayer if you need supplies or for more information about a particular task on the list. Um, also, just make sure you check out the rest of the announcements in the bulletin and, and the updates there. And uh, if you'd like to give to the ministries of the United Covenant Church, uh, or if you have a prayer request, you can place those in the offerings and requests uh, in the box below the sound booth. Um, also, just as a reminder, you can give online at unitedcovenantchurch.org. And uh, we, as you greet your neighbors, please remember to sign your attendance pads. As you are finding your seats, I know it's fun, we could talk all morning, right? Uh, but we are gearing up for our kids' song here, so if you are a kid or feel like a kid today, come on down. Both the kids and adults have been really doing well with our kids' song every month. So we brought back a favorite, and one I think you all will know, called My Lighthouse. Um, so the, we have our lovely ladies up here that will help show you, and then if you are a kid up here, you can watch Kristen and Claire and Emily, and they will show you what some of the actions are. But the basics are My Lighthouse, clap, clap. If you want to do nothing else, you should be able to clap, clap with us, I promise. Um, and then it's Peace um, in My Troubled Sea. I had to check to make sure. And then we do safe to shore a whole lot. So you can just, it's, it's very easy. I believe in you. You can do it. We're going for an A plus today. Okay? All right, here we go. In my wrestling and in my doubts, in my failures, you won't walk out. Your great love will lead me through. You are the peace in my trust.
Good job, guys. You definitely get, get an A when the leader can't keep up, so you're fine. <laughs> All right, uh, we're going to slow it down just a little bit before we head into our sermon. Father, thank you so much for this Sunday morning that we have to come together, the freedom that we have to meet in person, to be here together with other believers, to worship you, Lord, and to learn more about you. Lord, I ask that you give us open hearts and open minds as we go into our service and give Pastor the words to say to us today. Amen. The first reading is from Psalm 67. May God be merciful and bless us. May his face smile with favor on us. May your ways be known throughout the earth, your saving power among people everywhere. May the nations praise you, O God. Yes, may all the nations praise you. Let the whole world sing for joy because you govern the nations with justice and guide the people of the world, the whole world. 
May the nations praise you, O God. Yes, may all the nations praise you. Then the earth will yield its harvest, and God, our God, will richly bless us. Yes, God will bless us, and people all over the world will fear him. The second reading is from Romans chapter 5, verses 12 through 15. When Adam sinned, sin entered the world. Adam's sin brought death, so death spread to everyone, for everyone sinned. Yes, people sinned even before the law was given, but it was not counted as sin because there was not yet any law to break. Still, everyone died from the time of Adam to the time of Moses, even those who did not disobey an explicit commandment of God as Adam did. Now Adam is a symbol of representation of Christ, who was yet to come. But there is a great difference between Adam's sin and God's gracious gift. For the sin of this one man, Adam, brought death to many. But even greater is God's wonderful grace and his gift of forgiveness to many through this other man, Jesus Christ. Thank you, Emily. All right. Um, well, thank you for being here today. And we're going to have a little time of prayer. And just want to say thank the Lord for, um, well, Heidi Martin's birthday is today. So, <laughs> Heidi, 21 years. No? What's that? Ellen's birthday is also on Wednesday. So, happy birthday, Ellen. Okay, wonderful. Um, and we need to lift up, uh, Pam Van Hoeklem is having a surgery on June the 3rd for um, some suspicious tumor there on her thyroid, so we're going to lift that up in prayer. And um, also this morning just got um, a word from uh, Lucas. Lucas has a friend down in Kansas, and, and um, the anyway, in the church down there, there's a young man named Kevin, and they, they would like us to pray for him. He's, got a, he's in a coma, has a brain tumor, so that's the wonderful thing about the family of God, that it goes way beyond, you know, just our region here. So we're going to pray for, for that situation down in Kansas with this young man, young man named Kevin that needs our prayers. And is there any other, maybe somebody has something they want to praise God about, or um, if you have a prayer, you can very briefly, you could say it, and yeah. Praise God, and and this is you know this what is the last or was the last Sunday of Sunday school for our season. We'll have a little break now until um, we get back into it in September. But we we are just very thankful for each one of our teachers, and and they must be doing a good job because they beat the adults. So good job, kids. Okay, um, yeah, back there. Okay, we, yes, praise God for that. So Kristen's graduation party yesterday, so congratulations again to Kristen and all the graduates. God bless each one, and that was a great time. So I don't know, those other graduations are going to have a hard time keeping up with that good food that was there yesterday. I'm telling you, that was awesome. Okay, yeah, go ahead. Well, hey, good to see you. <laughs> Very good. Baby Otto. Okay, so we're going to pray for uh, vocal cords, you say, that are paralyzed vocal cords for a little baby Otto. So we're going to pray for a miracle with that. 
Okay, but it's so good to have you guys back. So, okay, I think that's it, I think. So let's go to the Lord in prayer then. Heavenly Father, God, we say thank you for this beautiful, cool day, Lord. But God, it's so good to be here together and to have the warmth of your presence as we worship you. We, we say thank you, Father. And God, we're praying um, again for our nation, for wisdom, for our leaders and, and help, Lord. God, we pray for the situation over in uh, Ukraine. We're praying for peace, for help there. Lord God, we, we do um, lift up to you um, this young man, Kevin, in Kansas that, that is um, in a coma with a brain tumor. And we're praying in the name of Jesus Christ, God, that you would just bring a miracle into that situation. And we're just adding to the thousands of prayers going up for him. So we just lift that up. And we continue to we pray for Pam Van Hooklum with her surgery. Father, we just pray that she will not have, that, that it really won't be cancer. But even if it is, we just pray for healing, total healing. And we thank you for that, Father. And and we're lifting up this little baby, Otto, Lord, that he would be, that his vocal cords would be um, released and that you'd just pour out a healing and bring him into 100% health there, Lord. Just bless him. Thank you that Reed and Nicole made it back. And Lord, we thank you for your, your faithfulness. Thank you for Heidi and Ellen and others that are celebrating birthdays. And so, God, we just say thank you. And thank you for our, our teachers, our Sunday school teachers and those that, that use their gifts in that way. So, Lord, all these things, along with many, many other things that, that are unspoken, Lord Jesus, we just lift all those to you. We say thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So, okay, so our scripture, um, well, we actually have going to go all over the place today, but, um, but I was reading some... I just happened to be reading a little bit this past week about, um, I like history, not everybody likes history, but but I, I'm kind of a history nerd, I guess, so I was reading a little bit about the, uh, the auto industry, because, um, you know, about 100 years ago, that was just kind of beginning, and I was reading about um, the first guy that invented the assembly line for the auto industry was a guy named Ransom Olds. Maybe you've heard of the Oldsmobile. But really, um, the, the first one who really implemented it was Henry Ford. So Henry Ford, he, he um, before the assembly line, it took about a little over 12 hours to make a car, okay, to produce a car. But after the assembly line, they got it down to one hour and 33 minutes. And they could just whip out these cars, you know, Model Ts, you know. And, and so there was, and it really changed the world. Because, you know, once people, and, and say the Model T, for instance, was pretty affordable for most people. And they could, you know, they were fairly reliable. And, um, and so it changed the world, you know, so instead of going to town once a week, you could go every day, or you could, oh, there's Pam, I didn't know that, <laughs> good to see you, um, but you could, you know, you could work in another community, you know, you could, um, it just really changed life, and, and there was three big car manufacturers, there was more than three, but there was Ford, GM, and Chrysler, and they're still around today, or you know, which is amazing, 100 years later. But, um, but anyway, what happened with all this, these assembly lines, I think we had a picture of, yeah. Anyway, so there's an old assembly line there. And, um, but what happened was that by 1924, so think about it, that's 98 years ago. By 1924, the market was saturated. 
that people were like, well, I've already got a car. I don't need another one. That was people's mindset. They bought a car for their family. They're like, I'm good. But um, so somebody in General Motors came up with the idea that, well, let's make a new model every year. Of course, we're so used to that now that, well, of course you do, right? But back then, that was a new concept. So let's make a, a new model every year so that people will think, well, I don't want this one anymore. I want to have the new one. And, and maybe a little improvements, you know, different style of body. And, and so, um, so they started to do that. And, and it didn't take long before in 1931, GM passed Ford, okay, with producing cars because everybody, this idea of having a new thing every year. And so that, that concept is called um, perceived obsolescence. It's perceived that what I have isn't as good as what I could have. It's a little bit shinier, right? It's a little bit nicer. And well, and, and then there's another thing called planned obsolescence. So planned obsolescence is, is like this. You know how it is that th this, these work wonderfully, but after a while you can't get the updates anymore, and they, they have it figured out. They're so smart. They got this figured out that, I mean, these are smartphones, right? <laughs> but they're too smart, right? They, they figure out that they, um, you know, the battery wears out, the so on and so forth. You got to get a new one about every, what, two and a half years or whatever. Um, and it goes on with everything, light bulbs. They, they could last way longer than they do, but they've got it engineered so that they're only going to last so long. Why? So that you go buy a new one, right? We know about that, right? So, um, and, and, you know, really with, and I was thinking about it, and it's kind of like as human beings, we have kind of a built-in fault, you know, uh, and that fault is, it's called sin. We have a sin nature. And we know that, that when, um, when Adam and Eve sinned against God, it brought into the world sin and death. So from that point on, now think about before, um, like when God made the world, when he first made creation, think about it, there was no death. Even plants didn't die. You know, nothing died. It was made forever. And it was made perfectly. There wasn't any fault with anything. And, you know, there was no disease, no plagues or famines or droughts or anything. Everything was perfect. But then when sin came into the world, sin and death came into the world, then corruption came into the world. And from that point on, People had a sin nature, okay? So people had this fault within them that, you know, once they get old enough to be able to understand between right and wrong, um, there, there's a, we have this sin nature that sometimes we turn to the wrong, okay? We think wrong or we say wrong or do wrong or there's things we should have done that we didn't do, so on and so forth. So that's a sin nature, and we all have it. The Bible says all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. So in Romans chapter 5 and verse 12, Paul says, he writes this, he says, When Adam sinned, sin entered the world. So this is the same scripture that Emily just read for us. When Adam sinned, sin entered the world. Adam's sin brought death. So death spread to everyone for everyone sinned. Yes, people sinned even before the law was given. Okay, let's just stop there for a minute. Before the law was given, what, what are we talking about? Well, we're talking about the law of Moses. Okay, so God, um, he, sent, he sent the law. And if you read in the book of Exodus in the Bible, we read about how God gave 
um, the law through Moses. And, you know, it's kind of like God just said, in case you didn't know, this is what is right and this is what's wrong. Okay, so it's right for you to honor your parents. It's wrong for you to murder. Probably already knew that, but just going to get that settled, right? <laughs> so that's the law. And, it, and we call it, you know, there's the Ten Commandments, right? Don't steal, don't commit adultery, don't have any gods before God. You know, all these things. Don't worship idols, um, so on and so forth. So God gave us the law, and he taught us. He, he said, this is the way to live, really. Here's the way to live. This is, if, if you do this, you will live well. Because God's will for us was good. He wasn't trying to, you know, wreck our lives because God is good. But here's the thing. Because we had a sin nature, we could not fulfill the law. And so God had, um, he had a system by which there would be sacrifice. We'll talk about that here in a minute. But let's just read on here with Romans uh, 5 here, it says, okay, yes, people sinned even before the law was given, but it was not counted as sin because there was not yet any law to break before the law was given. Still, everyone died from the time of Adam to the time of Moses, even those who did not disobey an explicit commandment of God as Adam did. Now, Adam is a symbol, a representation of Christ who is yet to come. But there's a great difference between Adam's sin and God's gracious gift. For the sin of this one man brought death to many. But even greater is God's wonderful grace and his gift of forgiveness to many through this other man, Jesus Christ. Okay, so death came through Adam, but grace and forgiveness and eternal life came through Christ. And that was God's provision for our sin. Um, but if we go back into the Old Testament again, in the Old Testament, the law was given, the law of Moses was given, and we were taught right from wrong, but also God gave a, a, a way for us to be forgiven, a way for us to, to have our sins atoned for. Now, atonement it's kind of a big word, but it, think about this, atonement, at one okay? If you break it down that way. So, so we, uh, sin separates us from God, but when our sins are covered, our relationship with God was made right. So the system in the Old Testament, as you read, we read about how there was all these animal sacrifices, because the Bible says that without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sins. And so people would, they'd sin because they had a sin nature, and then they'd, they'd offer a sacrifice according to the law of Moses. And so um, let's just look over here in, in Hebrews. Book of Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 1, it says, The old system under the law of Moses was only a shadow, a dim preview of the good things to come. Not the good things themselves. The sacrifices under that system were repeated again and again, year after year, but they were never able to provide perfect cleansing for those who came to worship. If they could have provided perfect cleansing, the sacrifices would have stopped, for the worshipers would have been purified once for all time, and their feelings of guilt would have disappeared. But instead, those sacrifices actually reminded them of their sins year after year. For it is not possible for the blood of bulls and goats to take away sins. It only covered it. It didn't take it away. People still felt guilty, right? They, they weren't totally, you know, they were, yeah, they were atoned for, but they still had that guilt. Um, their feelings of guilt would have disappeared. But instead, those sacrifices actually reminded them of their sins year after year. 
For it's not possible for the blood of bulls and goats to take away sins. That is why when Christ came into the world, he said to God, You did not want animal sacrifices or sin offerings, but you've given me a body to offer. Jesus would offer his own body for once and for all on the cross. That's why he's called the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. And so um, Jesus, and thank God that he did, because think about it. You know, we would have to travel to the tabernacle every day, right? I'd have to go get on a plane every day and go to Israel, you know, because I've, I have, and I don't, think I'm in, I don't think I'm alone in this, guys. We all stumble into sin sometimes, don't we? We would have to go and, and offer a sacrifice every time. Well, thank God we don't have to do that because Jesus died for once and for all, for all time. And it's, it's amazing. Let's skip down to verse 8. It says, first, Christ said, you did not want animal sacrifices or sin offerings or burnt offerings or other offerings for sin, no, nor will you, were you pleased with them, though, though they are re- required by the law of Moses. Then he said, look, I've come to do your will. He cancels the first covenant in order to put the second into effect. For God's will was for us to be made holy by the sacrifice of the body of Jesus Christ once for all time. Once for all time. He didn't have to do it again and again. He just did it once. And he cancels the first covenant in order to put the second into effect. The Old Testament is the Old Covenant. That's why we called it the Old Testament, right? And it points to the New Covenant. Jesus Christ said he did not come to abolish the law, to do away with the law. He came to fulfill it. So Jesus Christ came to fulfill the purpose of the law, which was to give us right standing with God. And that's what Jesus does. He makes us one with God. He atones our sin, makes us at one with God. Okay, so thank God for what Jesus Christ did for us. On the cross. And, and through Jesus, when we receive him, we receive the Spirit of God. We receive the Holy Spirit. So think about it. The Spirit of God lives within you. But you still are human, right? You still are a human being. You still have a sin nature. So it's kind of frustrating because we... <laughs> Like Paul says, he says, I want to do the right thing, but then I don't do it. Or the things I don't want to do, I end up doing. You know, we all struggle with this, right? Or am I alone in this? No, I'm not alone. No, I don't think so. We all struggle, don't we? And Paul Paul goes on to say, he says, what a wretched man I am. Who can free me from this body of death? Thanks be to God, Jesus Christ, right? Right? So we have these two natures in within us. And let's read about this here just for a moment in um, Galatians chapter 5. Galatians 5 verse 16. It says, so I say, let the Holy Spirit guide your lives. Then you won't be doing what your sinful nature craves. By the way, we're ta- he's, Paul is writing to Christians. He's not writing to everybody. He's writing to Christians here. Because only Christians have the Holy Spirit living within them. Okay, so I say, let the Holy Spirit guide your lives. Then you won't be doing what your sinful nature craves. The sinful nature wants to do evil, which is just the opposite of what the Spirit wants. And the Spirit gives us desires that are opposite of what the sinful nature desires. These two forces are constantly fighting each other so that you're not free to carry out your good intentions. But when you are directed by the Spirit, you are not under obligation to the law of Moses. Why? Because the Holy Spirit fulfills the law, right? Verse 19, when you follow the desires of your sinful nature, the results are very clear. Sexual immorality, impurity, lustful pleasures, idolatry, sorcery, hostility, quarreling, jealousy, outbursts of anger, selfish ambition, 
dissension, division, envy, drunkenness, wild parties, and other sins like these. Let me tell you again, as I have before, that anyone living that sort of life will not inherit the kingdom of God. What? Anyone living that sort of life will not inherit the kingdom of God? Well, that's what it says. And then you say, well, wait a minute. You know, I, I sin. I have selfish ambitions. I have sometimes... Um, you know, angry outbursts, right? If we're honest, sometimes we do, right? Or whatever that list is, there, there could be any number of things. But let me tell you, there's a difference between stumbling into sin and walking in sin. So sometimes we stumble into sin because we have a sin nature. I might have, uh, like the first one on the list here is... Uh, sexual immorality, okay, so I'm, I might have a, an immoral thought, you know, something that is, and I know that it's wrong, and I'm like, okay, or I see something I shouldn't see, or it's like, oh, Lord, God, forgive me, I don't, I don't want to sin against you, and I might, I might stumble, but then I say, Father, I'm, I'm going to get right back with you, I just repent of it, I ask for forgiveness, now that's different than walking in sin. That's different than if I was not married, if I had a girlfriend that I'm going to go habit, cohabitate with, okay? That's a, a lifestyle of it, you know what I'm saying? So there's a difference between stumbling and walking in sin. Does that make sense? It does. So um, if you live like that, you will not inherit the kingdom of God. And but the Holy Spirit, so that's the sin nature. So we're not going to, we don't want to do what the sin nature wants us to do. But the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against these things. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have nailed the passions and desires of their sinful nature to his cross and crucified them there. Since we're living by the Spirit, let us follow the Spirit's leading in every part of our lives. Let's follow the Holy Spirit. Okay, so we got these two natures. We've got the, the sinful nature. We've got the nature of Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, the 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 guidance, the leading of, of God in our lives. Okay, let's read one more here. This is Galatians 6, verse 7. And Paul says, don't be misled. You cannot mock the justice of God. You will always harvest what you plant. Those who live only to satisfy their own sinful nature will harvest decay and death from that sinful nature. But those who live to please the Spirit will harvest everlasting life from the Spirit. So let's not get tired of doing what's good. At just the right time, we will reap a harvest of blessing if we don't give up. Therefore, whenever we have the opportunity, we should do good to everyone, especially to those in the family of faith. Okay, so we, we, sow in, we either sow into the, the nature of God, the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, or we sow into our, our fleshly nature. These two things are fighting, but we feed, which one are you going to feed? I guess that's the thing. Which one are you going to plant into? And, and if we plant into the flesh, we're going to reap destruction. But if we plant into the Spirit, we're going to, to reap eternal life. So we need to... So again, it's, it's which, which one are you feeding? Okay, which one are you, you putting your life into? If you, if you delve into the things of the flesh, you know, I would just say today, stop feeding that one. Okay, stop planting into that. If there's an area of your life that, is, that you know is contrary to the will of God, 
Don't do that. Repent of it. Turn away from it because it's going to lead you astray. It's going to lead you away from the Lord. But plant into that which is eternal and sow into that which is eternal. And how do we do that? Well, we, we draw near to the Lord. We worship the Lord. The fact that you're here today or watching online, you, you're doing an activity that, that is feeding, that is planting into the holy, holiness of God. You're doing the right thing. Worship the Lord. Um, read the Bible. Like we sang, did we do this one? Read your Bible, pray every day, and you'll grow, grow, grow. Neglect your Bible, forget to pray, and you'll shrink, shrink, shrink. <laughs> you should have been here for Sunday school. It was really fun. <laughs> but it's true, you know, it's, it's true. It's very simple. It's not rocket science. God made it really, really simple. It's, it's, you're going to reap what you sow. And, and the tough thing is that sometimes you don't reap it right away, okay? Sometimes you're going to get that harvest later on. So you might be reaping into the flesh, and you're like, well, this is great. This is so much fun. And then years later, you're like, this is not so much fun, right? So, so don't sow into that. It's going to catch up with you, okay? But sow into the Spirit. And plus, the Spirit is life-giving. I mean, who doesn't want love, joy, Peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and gentleness, and self-control. Those are good things, right? Those are good things. The peace of God, the presence of God. So sow into that. Sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, you know, making music in your heart. Sing to the Lord. Worship Him. Pray. Spend time with Him. Read the Bible. Um, share Jesus with someone. Help somebody. Do something nice for someone. Okay, these are really, they're, they're all things that, that help to plant into the life of the Spirit. And that's, so that's really the message, I think, today, is that it's either you're planting into the flesh or you're planting into the Spirit. So um, I'll just read one last one. And... And by the way, we never, as we follow the Lord Jesus, don't ever think that you get to a place where you're like, oh man, I've, I've arrived now. I'm, I am perfect. I don't think anybody's going to really have that problem, probably, but just in case you did, there's a scripture here and it says, if you think, 1 Corinthians 10, 12, if you think you're standing strong, be careful not to fall. The temptations in your life are no different from what others experience. And God is faithful. So think about it. Whatever we, whatever we face is, look at everybody faces temptations, okay? You're, you're not alone. We're not alone. Everybody does because we have a sin nature. The temptations in your life are no different from what others experience. And God is faithful. He will not allow the temptation to be more than you can stand. When you are tempted, he will show you a way out so that you can endure it. Praise God for that. He's always going to show you the way out. We just have to be smart enough to take the way out. And we say, Father, just help me with the, this thing's tempt. This is a temptation for me. Give me the victory. Help me. And he's going to help you with that. And your brothers and sisters in Christ are are there to help you too. That you can get prayer. If there's especially an area that that you struggle with, it's really good to to get some prayer on that thing. You know, come to a trusted brother or sister in Christ and say, "Listen, um, can you pray for me?" And I would suggest if you're if you're a, a female, find a female to pray for you. If you're a male, find
find a male to pray for you. It's just, I mean, not, yeah. So they're going to pray for you, and they're going to help you, and, and we're here to help one another because we're all in it together, and we all um, have these natures, but let's, let's encourage one another. Let's plant into the Spirit. So let's just pray that even right now as the team comes forward. We're going to pray this. Father God, we say thank you that you, you understand what we go through. You know what we struggle with. And God, we want to say thank you that you are, you are gracious. Jesus Christ, you paid the sacrifice for our sins. But Lord God, we say thank you too that, that you give us the victory that you can help us. And so help us, Father, to, to plant in, into those things that are pleasing to you. Let us draw near to you that you may draw near to us. And, and we just pray your holy blessing on each one today. We say thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord in our Father's house. There's a place for us. Um, just had a 
so there, there's prayer available out there or in the prayer room back there if you're here with us, and um, especially if somebody's been, I had this sense of someone's been struggling with uh, kind of pain or like headache in this part of their head, I guess. So if that's you, get some prayer, and God is going to touch you and deliver you, and God bless you with that. And um, we're going to say the Lord's Prayer together, but get prayer for whatever you want prayer for, and um, we're going to pray the Lord's Prayer. You're, you're going to notice that we start out by saying our Father. We don't say our Mother. We say our Father. Amen? Amen. Praise Amen. the Lord. Let's just go with what the Bible says, okay? We're going to be safe as long as we go with the Word of God, and we don't try to be funny with that, okay? Let's just go with that. So let's pray together. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Have a great day.